Welcome. In this video, let's explore what it means to be API first. You might know Postman because you consume APIs, and you might also know about producing APIs using Postman. Some people say API first when it comes to commercializing your APIs. For example, your business can be API first, and you can provide APIs as a product. But today, we're talking about API first as an approach for the API producers. This means defining and designing an API contract, to then generate tests and documentation, to then deploy, observe, and distribute your APIs. In Postman's State of the API survey, we asked, what does API first mean to you? Some people who work with APIs aren't really sure what API first means, and other people think about API first differently. Let's start with the most common answer, defining and designing APIs and schema before beginning development. As an API producer, the first question to ask is, do you develop the API first before the dependent integrations and applications? If you answer yes, the next question is, do you design the API first before starting a code? If yes, do you use an API contract like Open API or a Postman collection to gain alignment among your stakeholders? If you answer yes at every decision point, you are contract first. When you follow this approach to API first, you have an open API or Postman collection that acts like an API contract so you can experience the design benefits, earlier feedback, faster growth. And the API contract is an agreement between all your stakeholders, the producer and potential consumers. So you can decouple dependencies and begin parallel development and also use the API contract to auto-generate mock servers, documentation, contract tests, server-side code, client-side SDKs, all of that good stuff to reap the development benefits. Other API workflows include proposing an API design. When you share the proposal with stakeholders and collect feedback, you can make sure you're building what people want. You can negotiate and once you have consensus, you have a contract or a pact between the API producer and consumers. Because you have that alignment, you can decouple your dependencies for parallel development between producer and consumers, developer and tester, engineering and content creators. You might then use that API contract to auto-generate mock stocks, test and code. Or Postman Engineering does this, use the contract to enforce consumer-driven contract testing for API producers to make sure they're not releasing breaking changes to their consumers. This is API first. At every decision point, we answered yes. But what happens if you answer no at any point along the way? Can you still call yourself API first? Let's go back to our decision tree. Starting with our happy path. If you answer yes all along the way, you can have the design benefits and development of benefits with this approach. Let's look at the first decision. Do you develop the API first? If you answer no, you are API last. This is a very common scenario. If you have a legacy API that you inherited, you have to maintain an existing API, this could be you. But from here, a lot of organizations that already have an API will then back into an open API spec or Postman collection in order to auto-generate mock stocks, tests, and code. Some teams will manually write their OAS or manually create a Postman collection Others will proxy traffic from a gateway, for example, because they have limited visibility about their API footprint. With API last, backing into the development benefits, you still won't have any of the design benefits of API first. Let's move on to the next decision. Do you design the API first? If you develop the API first, but then don't design it before writing code, you are code first or prototype first. Again, you're not gonna have the design benefits of API first, but you can still try to capture some of the development benefits. Next decision, do you use an API contract, importantly here, to gain alignment among stakeholders? If you answer no, there's still one more decision. Do you use anything like a written document to gain alignment among st stakeholders? If you create design requirements to gain alignment among your stakeholders, you are requirements first. You have some of the design benefits and some of the development benefits. 
Contract first and requirements first are both considered design first approaches. Except with contract testing, you're using Open API or a Postman collection as an enforceable contract. You can run validation or set up rules that must be followed. With requirements first, you don't have an enforceable contract and you're one step removed from the thing that lets you auto-generate a bunch of stuff. So there's more operational maintenance costs to keep everything in sync. Everything here is a version of API first. Even API last teams who back into open API or Postman collections. Usually once an API last team sees some of the operational or development benefits, they have more buy-in to then transition over to using open API as a contract, designing new APIs using that contract first workflow. In the state of the API survey, we also asked, what are the benefits of an API first approach? You can see the answers here. API first helps you launch new products faster, create better software, be more productive. And look at that last factor there. 75% of people believe API first organizations are happier. This was four implementations of API first. If you're interested in learning more about API first, I'll drop a link to some resources in the description below and let us know how you're doing API first.